Hi, this is the last video we're going to have in this crash course on learning core financial concepts. After this, we're going to go into using them on different applications of things that might be interesting to us. So the last concept we need to explore is that of internal rate of return. The internal rate of return is a measure of the interest rate that an investment actually yields. Um, also, the internal rate of return is the interest rate or the discount rate that causes the net present value of that investment to equal zero. That'll make sense in another minute. So in our last video, we were looking at some alternatives that we had for how to invest our $5,000. First, we could invest it in a bank account that had a 5% interest rate. Second, we can loan some money to a friend of ours. Third, we could loan some money to our Uncle Joe. In the last tutorial, we determined that the loan to Uncle Joe was going to be better for us because it had a positive net present value. And what that means is that it's going to increase our wealth by $451 in current dollar terms. Whereas the loan to our friend was going to leave us $153 in current value terms worse off than would be investing in a bank account. So we compared first the loan to our friend to our bank account and the loan to our uncle to our bank account. We know now that they have positive net present values. Well, one does and the other has a negative pre present value, net present value. But sometimes it's not as an intuitive of a way to express the yield that something gives us. Sometimes we want to say, sure, all right, it has a negative net present value, but you know, what does that mean? Tell me what rate of return that investment offers me. That's what the internal rate of return tells us. And when you calculate NPV of, a, of an um, investment and use the rate of return as a discount rate, your NPV will turn out to be zero. Let's start by calculating our internal rates of return. So for our loan to our friend, the internal rate of return can be found by entering equals IRR for internal rate of return. And then all we have to do is highlight the values from B16 to B24. It tells us that our internal rate of return is four and a quarter percent. A quick note on formatting percentages. When you calculate your percentages, at first it's going to most likely come up like this, four percent. Dollar signs, we want as a general rule to use no decimal places. Percentages, as a general rule, you're going to want to use two decimal places. Let's then calculate the internal rate of return for our loan to our uncle. We use the same command. It equals IRR parentheses all of our values. Return. You want to watch out for the temptation here to highlight the present values, right? We don't want those. We're not interested in the IRR of the present values. We want to know the IRR of our actual cash flows in actual dollars. That rate of return is 6.96%, just a hair under 7. So what's to be seen here? What we can see is that in investment number one, the loan to our friend, our internal rate of return is four and a quarter percent, just under, right? And we've got a negative net present value. Well, the relationship that I want you to pay attention to is the fact that we're comparing when calculating our NPV, we're comparing our cash flows to an interest rate of 5%. And we were able to say, oh yes, compared to that, we're going to be $153 worth off in current dollars. It's no surprise then to find out in our next step that that investment actually yields three quarters of a percentage in interest or in compound interest equivalent less than the bank account, right? Similarly, when we look at investment two and we see that we've got a positive net present value of $451, it then comes as no surprise to us that an investment with a positive net present value is going to have an internal rate of return greater than the interest rate or the discount rate. So when net present value is greater than zero, the IRR of the investment is higher than the discount rate. When the NPV of a project is less than zero, the IRR of the investment is less 
than the discount rate. So what I want to show us for a minute, or I want to illustrate, is that net present value varies as a function of the interest rate. Bear with me, I'm going to scroll down. There. We're going to look at investment number two because it has the positive net present value. And that's the investment, that's the money, that's the place we would choose to park our money for the next eight years if these were our only three alternatives. Because investment number two, the loan to our uncle is gonna maximize our wealth. It's gonna be the, max, the wealth maximizing alternative. So let's compare the net present value of investment number two at different discount rates. So what we're essentially asking ourselves is, if our only other alternative was to throw our money under our mattress and earn no interest, what would our net present value be? We're gonna answer this question by saying that our net present value is gonna be equal to that initial, initial investment plus our net present value at 0% of the cash flows we're going to receive at the end of year one through the end of year eight. So what I want you to notice is that the initial cash flow, the $5,000, and all of the cash flows get absolute references because they're not going to change, right? We're looking for the NPV of those at different interest rates. So by giving the interest rate or the discount rate and relative reference, I'll be able to just drag my formula down to see how my NPV changes as my discount rate changes. So I'm going to look at discount rates from 0% to 12%, but I threw in another value. I threw in the value of 6.96%, which is equal to our internal rate of return. Why did I do that? I did it so you could see how NPV equals 0 when the discount rate is IRR. Right? It's because when we discount the cash flows at the internal rate of return, we don't have any increase in wealth that we're generating from that investment, or we don't have any loss in wealth. That investment exactly covers our discount rate. It exactly requires the rate of return that we require. It exactly covers the rate of return that we require. Let's graph this. I'm going to start as we did in the previous example and highlight all of my numbers, click charts, tell it I want a scatter plot, and I'm going to choose to do a smooth lined scatter so I don't have the points distracting me. I want to go over one more time how I want you to format charts. Uh, the reason being is that a lot of the graph charts that came in on the first assignment looked a little had a couple of issues. So the first issue is that this area here between 2,000 and 2,500, we don't need that. This area here between 1,000 and 1,500, we don't need that. We also don't need to see anything with a discount rate of 13% or 14% because we don't have data. I want this line, this relationship line that shows how NPV changes as the discount rate changes. I want that to take up the whole entire piece of our graph. I don't want anything left over. It makes it more meaningful and easier to, to interpret. So I start by single clicking on the Y axis, all of the numbers, all those NPVs highlight, and I double click or I right click depending on your computer, and I'm going to format my axis. This box comes up, and I'm going to say, all right, looking first at my minimum value, it automatically sets it at negative 1,500. I'm going to change it so that it's at negative 1,000, so that my line comes almost down to the very tip of that. Similarly, for the maximum, I don't have anything greater than $1,900, so I'm going to make my maximum 2,000. And I'm going to say OK. Then I'm going to go down to my x-axis, click once first, then right-click, and I'm going to format my axis. My minimum is going to stay zero, but I want my maximum to be 12%. I don't need it to go any higher. And another thing you can look at is see how my percentages jump by two, zero to two, two to four, four to six, six to eight, right? Let's change that. Let's change our major unit so that instead of being 2%, it 
it's 1%, 0 0.01, right? The decimal equivalent of 1%. I say okay. Then I'm gonna click my quick chart layout, the furthest most one to the left. And that will automatically get it to insert my title and two titles for my axis. My chart title in this example is gonna be net present value of an investment at various discount rates. I don't need it to take up two lines of my precious chart space, so I'm going to reduce the font to 14%. That doesn't get it to one line. I'm sorry, to 16%. That doesn't get it to one line. I'm going to reduce it to 14%. I'm going to move this box up just a little to get out of my way. I'm going to delete that legend. Then I'm going to label my axis. NPV, discount rate. So what I'm hoping you're getting out of this first is another refresher on how to format a chart. And the second thing that I want you to understand is that the greater the discount rate, the lower the net present value. And that's because it would take more money in the future to recoup your investment if you had a place to park more money, if you had a place that yielded more interest. The reason for that is that money grows faster at higher interest rates. Also, when the discount rate is equal to a project's or an investment's internal rate of return, our net present value is equal to zero. So that concludes our first major list of financial concepts, the way we calculate them. And what I want you to be able to do right now is calculate them as we've done in the tutorials and in the book. And I want you to be able to explain them and I want you to understand how they work. Because after this, we're going to go into a variety of applications that show us how to use them. Happy calculating.